So this is the nerdy video about what exactly it is that is taught in medical colleges and when doctors are seeing patients, what is it that is going on in their minds, what are they thinking, what's the whole process like, all of it. So basically, uh, diagnosing and prescribing are like the two golden skills of any doctor, which is exactly what we learn through five and a half years. Before we begin with this video, I would like to thank Prep Ladder for sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. So as soon as the patient walks through the door, the moment you see him, that's the time when you actually start thinking about a lot of things, when you actually start making a diagnosis. Because just by seeing the patient come through the door to your table, you can see and observe a lot of things like the general appearance of the patient, the gait, that is how the person is walking, is the person, person conscious or not, the gender of the person, the age of the person, the mental status of the person and all of that. As you might be familiar with your previous experience, experiences with doctors, the first thing the doctors ask is demographic data, which is basically the name, age, gender, the address, and in some cases, the religion of the patient and all these details. Next, after all the greetings and the demographic data is done, the patient now uh, talks about his or her complaints. For example, it could be like, doctor, I'm having a fever for five days and for example, a sore throat for two days. These are what we call the chief complaints of the patient. Um, chief complaints of the patient, as is quite obvious by now, are basically the main complaints, the immediate complaints that are troubling the patient and for which he or she has come to your clinic. Now, once you know the chief complaints of the patient, the next step is all about having a differential diagnosis. A differential diagnosis is basically a list of possible diagnosis which can be present in your patient and with the chief complaints that he or she is presenting with for example a fever is generally due to an infection in some cases due to other factors such as stress but usually it's due to an infection but the infection could literally be in any part of the body it could be the brain it could be the lungs it could be the anywhere in the abdomen it could be in the musculoskeletal system literally anywhere so after the chief complaints the whole ball game is to narrow down the differential diagnosis to a definite diagnosis so now when we have our chief evidences as our chief complaints we dig down further into the details of the specific symptoms Symptoms are what the patient presents with and signs are what you examine and what you find out by your examination. For example, in case of fever, you would like to ask about the grade of fever. Was it measured or not at home? Does it appear to have like a diurnal variation? That is, uh, is it more during the day or the night or it is just present anytime or all the time in the day? What's the duration, which you would usually know by the chief complaints and what's the character of the fever, intermittent or continuous, etc, etc. So like literally every symptom has a lot of details that you need to ask about. And this part of our history taking is basically called as the HOPI or the history of present or presenting illness. You also want to rule out other possible symptoms that might or might not be present and the patient might not have told you about. For example, was there a cough? If it was there, then was it dry or was it a productive cough? And so on and so forth. At the end of HOPI, we have a clearer idea as to what exactly is it that we are uh, suspecting in this patient. After our clues are present, the, all the prime suspects are there in our minds now and we have a more clearer mind map of the whole case, that's when we go to the past history. Past history is the part where we basically ask patients about their previous illnesses, were there any chronic diseases, for example, was there any hypertension or diabetes mellitus in the patient, was in India especially very common to ask about any history of tuberculosis because it's very common in India and other illnesses which might have been present in the patient in the past. After the past history, we like to talk to the patient about his, pers his or her personal history, which is basically things like any addictions, for example, any history of smoking or alcohol consumption and what's the diet like of the patient and other related lifestyle habits. At this point of time, we have narrowed down our list of differential diagnoses to a very small list, we have 
the HOPI, we have the chief complaints, the HOPI, the past history, the personal history. And then we ask the person about the family history. For example, were there any similar illnesses in the family in the near future or before? Were there any chronic illnesses? So, for example, in things like chronic infections and cancers and diabetes and hypertension. This is very important because if there's a family member with these with a history of these conditions, it, it is quite likely that these things are passed on to the next generations. In women, we also like to ask about the obstetrics and the gynecology history, which is basically the number of children a woman has, uh, the menstrual cycles, are they regular or not so regular. And all these things, you know, oftentimes they don't seem uh, very relevant to the patient because to them it might feel like you're just trying to throw your hands in the air and catch something but honestly everything is connected so for example um, in a patient who is present who is visibly weak who is presenting with a lot of leg cramps and weakness and shortness of breath a history of for example of uh, five or more childbirths in her lifetime is very significant because it might need us to do a CBC in this patient and check the hemoglobin levels and they might be low, the patient might be suffering from an iron deficiency anemia. We are actually aiming at something, we are not just asking people these things for the sake of records. So after all these points, we have only covered the first actual step of towards diagnosing a patient which is the history taking aspect of it and while it is very difficult to study and revise and remember all these points for every single symptom that a patient might present with it is still easier than actually going into the hospitals and seeing patients so in MBBS, from second year onwards, we have our clinical postings. In clinical postings, we see all sorts of patients, common ones and uncommon ones. And what's tricky about uh, seeing patients and seeing human beings in general is that everyone is unique. Every patient would present with a different set of problems. So while we read about like classical symptoms of diseases, it's very different in the field because like people rarely come with, you know, tags on them. It's very rare to have a patient which has like all the classical symptoms of any disease. It's literally in all kinds of permutations and combinations. This is why it is important to see as many patients as you can during your training years because the more patients you see, the more combinations of diseases you see, the more you develop this knack of understanding as to what exactly are the symptoms of a patient or are the signs of a patient which we'll just talk about in a bit are telling you about. Now, last year in my internship, I realized that since there is COVID, we are getting very few patients in our wards of any other diseases. And now since medical students are only having online medical schools and there is literally zero to a few patients that they actually get to see. It's really sad that the quality of medical training is obviously falling down for these students. Now, prep ladders clinical simulation is the exact uh, solution and is the cool solution to this. So basically, the clinical simulations are a part of the PrepLadder app in which um, there are a lot of case scenarios of different systems. And under each system, you have very, very common and you have very uh, important case scenarios that are given to you. It is like seeing a real patient. It uh, They have all these features of uh, patient histories and examinations and they would ask you to do whatever investigations you think is right and then give the treatment that you think is right and then finally there will be an explanation to what you did right, what you did not do right. So it has the advantage of closely simulating a real life patient interaction but it is minus the risk of actually harming any patient just because we were not experienced enough. After we've taken the history of the patient, and mind you, we have not even touched the patient yet, uh, we have the next part, which is the examination. So an examination, we usually divide it into two parts, which is general examination and a systems analysis or a systemic examination. In general examination, we usually see like the whole state of the patient. We see the pulse, we see the 
respiratory rate we see we see pickle which is pallor icterus cyanosis clubbing lymphadenopathy and edema after a full general physical examination then we move on to systemic examination so obviously as you might know our body has a, a ton of system from the most to the least relevant we kind of do a whole systemic examination of all the major systems after now after uh, examination comes the investigation now investigations can be a number of things they could be a simple blood test or a cbc a thyroid profile a liver function test a kidney function test or it could be an imaging like an x-ray or an ultrasound or a ct scan or an mri so it's really important to know what investigations to do with them because a lot of investigations and their findings can overlap and you do not want to um, do extra investigations and you do not want to sit back and not do some investigations which could really aid you in your diagnosis now after you have all these investigations and you have come down to narrow your list and you finally arrived at a diagnosis that one single word is word that which is the diagnosis now is when you have to decide the treatment now although uh, there are treatment guidelines for all the diseases there is no guideline which is one size fits all every patient has different needs and different uh, worries and different severities of disease and every patient is comfortable with different kinds of medicines and it's really important to counsel the patient to talk with the patient and then decide what treatments uh, we're going to go for so let's see a patient case i'm choosing something from endocrinology they've called it skyrocketed so we have here the history uh, the investigations and the management uh, in history they have talked about a 49 year old male uh, who has recently been out on a trip for to an indian village maybe an infective etiology um then uh, so, uh, so then he's come for like from the past six months there has been paroxysmal episodic headache he has a family history of some unknown disease and his relatives have hypertension he has hypertension this doesn't look like an infection anymore and they've talked about all the related uh, symptoms then in examination they have shown us the vital signs he is definitely hypertensive the pulse rate is high so is the respiratory rate in physical examinations he is conscious a lot or uh, he is generally fine but on cvs there is apparent tachycardia that's there is increased heart rate otherwise everything is fine but there is diaphoresis which is excessive sweating moving on to investigations they've given us a range of investigations i can choose to do the ones which i feel are important so i thought that an ecg a renal artery doppler hearing tests so i was basically uh, thinking that it could be a few chromocytoma let's see uh, and an mri abdomen and fractionated metanephrine levels then finally coming to the management they have again given us a lot of relevant management options obviously not all of them are correct we have to choose the ones which are necessary and correct i think it's um, a short course of tap and oxybenzene and beta blockers followed by adrenalectomy let's see so here i have my analysis um I was correct it is a pheochromocytoma they have told me about what were my choices uh, were they correct or not they have also given links to related video solutions and related cubac solutions and then explain the reasoning and then a scientific discussion about it and in the end there are references so yes i really appreciate the fact that we get an instant feedback which is sometimes not possible even in actual clinical scenarios so yes in conclusion history examination investigations and treatment these are the four major steps which are required in managing patients and treating them easier said than done easier explained than done and easier डॉट एंड देन लर्न एंड देन पेशेंट से कि हमने तो फार्मेसी से दवाई ले ली थी दैट जस्ट ब्रेक्स माई हार्ट बिकॉज कम ऑन सो या बेसिकली दिस इज वॉट यू लर्न इन मेडिकल कॉलेज दिस इज वॉट इट ऑल कम्स डाउन टू बिफोर यू गो आई जस्ट लाइक टू टेल यू दैट द क्लिनिकल सिमुलेशन फीचर ऑफ द प्लाडर एप इज 
a part of their Dream Pack 2021. So it comes with the subscription of Dream Pack 2021. I will put the link of their subscription down in the description box below. So make sure you check that out. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.